Welcome to Jurassic World. Welcome to the Jurassic World Minute, where we visit Jurassic World one minute at a time. We're all the new guy. I'm Brad. I'm Dave. And on this episode, we're discussing Minute 25 of Jurassic World. Before we get to that, David, heading over to Jurassic-pedia.com. Uh, there's been a few new articles uh, written up by the team there, um, focusing today on some of the cast, or some of the characters for Camp Cretaceous. Um, we've got a uh, article up here for Brooklyn, but there's also articles up for... Uh, Yasmina and uh, a couple of the other characters in Camp Cretaceous as well. Yeah. Well, pretty much all the all the info we've been given on them anyway. Yeah, we got some character bios up, uh, I think, last week or a week ago. And so we've been using those to kind of build up the basic kind of uh, character information before we actually get the show out. So we've been working diligently on Jurassic Pedia when we get new information to find. <laughs> oh, I remember back to the uh, back to Battle of Big Rock when that <laughs> came out and the hard work you guys put in over over a couple of nights to get all those character bios and that up and um, articles done for Pedia. So it's good work, good work. So you can yeah. check it. Oh, I was oh, oh, just <laughs> <laughs> uh, all good so yeah you can head over to drastic-pedia.com for uh, those new articles and uh, more going up every day okay eyes on me blue blue watch it Charlie do- hey don't give me that shit Delta lock it up good and we're moving all right, Dave, ready to get into minute 25? Uh, sure. As we're in minute 24 of Jurassic World, Barry pulled Leon the Raptor Handler to safety, but Owen was in a more dire position, telling Blue to stand down. At the 10 second mark, with his hands outreached, he calls out to Delta, Hey, I see you, as the Raptor comes around from the side, making a telltale approach. To attack. The whole time, as we get that Raptor Squad meme, Owen's slowly walking backwards, trying to convince himself and Blue that he's in control. At the 28 second mark, he calls back to Barry to close the gate. Barry asks, are you crazy? And he just says, just trust me. At the 42 second mark, Owen's face changes from that of confidence to fear as he turns and runs towards the closing gate and does a forward somersault under the bars as the gate crashes closed and the raptors pounce. Barry helps Owen to his feet and as the minute ends Owen looks down at Leon still sitting on the ground and asks you're the new guy right? As we continue into minute 25 as Barry pulls Leon back through the uh, half open cage door Owen's now alone, out with those raptors. Um, He says Blue's name and tells her to stand down. And Blue sort of uh, doesn't like that command and lunges forward a little bit, snapping, not following the order. Again, (laughs) again, not uh, not showing that he has complete control here. Um, This is the first time he's been face-to-face with these animals for a very long time, without bars between him and her. Mm Mm-hmm. 
But uh, he stands his ground and uh, yells to her again, "Hey, hey, what did I just say? What did I just say?" And we get the uh, the sound guy pushing that shriek button on the computer for the uh, raptor shriek there. <laughs> <laughs> As we cut behind Owen, um, and we can see Blue in front of him, and he calls out Delta's name, looking to the left, saying, "I see you back up." And Delta roars at him and opens the jaws. Just getting that sort of that pack behaviour here, the raptors starting to fan out, and we the two raptors on the side start to move around out of his view, uh, much like what we got with uh, Grant saying at the start of Jurassic Park. But Owen's sort of slowly stepping backwards here and saying, OK, good, because they're listening to his uh, commands, and this is where we get the famous meme image of him standing with his arms out and the uh, the raptor squad looking at him, which I think any, any and all uh, characters of pop culture have been cut and pasted and, <laughs> and that into this scene. It's kind of interesting because, I mean, as I've been talking about for the past couple of minutes now, the pack dynamic here is Blue is clearly in charge, and they only follow the directions of Owen because she respects Owen. And if you look at the kind of pack dynamic here, the, there's Blue in the center being flanked by the, her other two raptors as she faces down the alpha, who is Owen. And she kind of leads the other two, pushing Owen towards the open gate. Hmm. Yeah, well, they're constantly moving. He's backing mm-hmm. back towards that gate, knowing it's his only way of escape. But... And Blue knows that as well, that that may very well be their only mode of escape as well. Mm. Yeah, well, you sort of mentioned the last couple of minutes how how orchestrated <laughs> this... Um this move was by the Raptors of getting someone in the pen so they could they could have a way out. Mm-hmm. But then the uh, Blue does something <laughs> interesting here. She uh, gets right down in one of those striking poses. We had one of the Raptors do it in Jurassic Park just as it was about to leap at uh, Grant and the survivors in the uh, lobby in the visitor mm-hmm. centre. Um, just that real low, about to leap forward in attack pose, which is a shame because obviously uh, the CG model's not there Chris Pratt doesn't see her doing that. He's looking next well, next over to Charlie, saying her name and telling her to stay right there. <sighs> and in effect, I kind of say that's the um, that's kind of the downside of not using practical kind of dino. They called them dino poles in um, the first two movies, where they would have basically a cartoon cutout of the dinosaur's head stuck to a pole either like 20 foot in the air for like the t-rex or right next to the car for the t-rex or where they'd have it set in a specific spot in order to kind of key up that the actors looking at the anima at the um cgi dinosaur and we had motion capture actors in (laughs) the um in the use of this scene but there's really only so much that can be done with an animal with only one kind of leg joint, whereas the raptors have this, have that bird-like three-jointed leg and are able to kind of crouch and move much differently than an, than an actor in a motion capture suit. You know? Mm. And yeah. so when the, the, if the actor doesn't quite crouch down far enough, the, act, the Chris Pratt doesn't know to follow the, the line of sight down there, you know? Yeah, yeah, and um, everyone's seen them. We'll post some photos up on the uh, the socials of the uh, the Power Ranger putties with the Raptor hats on <laughs> that are they're standing in for the uh, the Raptor squad um, throughout these scenes. We talked with uh, Fallen Kingdom when we were starting to get stuff leaked before that, and Chris Pratt interacting with that blue puppet, um, the baby blue puppet, and just how much mm-hmm. you can see in his eyes the the joy of working or being mm-hmm. next to that thing and. Uh, the, the real bond the actors get with animatronics over exactly yeah. yeah like when those actors and when Sam Neill and uh, Laura Dern both saw the Triceratops puppet <laughs> for the first time that was them seeing the Triceratops puppet for the first time they get this giant big smile on their face and they're looking at something uh, like a real dinosaur, like how a paleontologist would look at a real dinosaur. Mm. And you just don't really get that with an actor kind of wearing a a grayscale hat, you know? (laughs) No, no. 
No, and we did uh, we did neglect to mention it in the last uh, Jurassic Minutes. Colin's come out and said, or well, someone's come out and said that the uh, Dominion's going to have more animatronics than the first two films combined. So, isn't really saying much because <laughs> there wasn't a lot in Jurassic World and only a couple in Fallen Kingdom. But hopefully, we'll get a bit more of that uh, that interaction between actors and the uh, the animatronics. Agreed. Yeah. Another thing leading off what you said about um, about the uh, Fallen Kingdom where they were with that with the blue puppet again with the with Fallen Kingdom there's the animatronic Indoraptor that Ted Levine interacted with inside the cage and that thing was getting up in his face. I mean you can see in the trailer before they kind of digitalized over it that the the image of the Indoraptor puppet. That's actually there in his face, growling in his face, you know? And mm. you're reacting against that shot of this two-foot-wide head, basically with an open mouth and sharp teeth right in your face, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, even going back to The Lost World 2 with uh, Ludlow in the, the hull of the SS Venture, mm-hmm. he's there stand, look, stand, staring up at that massive Tyrannosaur animatronic looking down at him and roaring. And then his stunt double is in the mouth. I mean, they removed the <laughs> teeth. They removed the teeth. You can kind of see in the movie where they removed the uh, teeth. But still, I mean, it's in the T Rex's mouth. <laughs> We're in his mouth, man. We're in his mouth. Godzilla reference there. <laughs> <laughs> I understood that. Please. Yes, <laughs> I thought you would. Um, yeah, yeah. It... We're going to get to it later when we do have our one animatronic on set with uh, the down to Patasaur and just if uh, if that works or not. But yeah, um, interesting here. We have Blue, we have Delta, and Charlie. Where's Echo? Echo's nowhere to be seen at this stage. It's because she she's off eating the pig. I mean, you. I think that you can ah. see her when she's um when the when the between Owen talking to the to Liam. And um, and this scene here, you can you see her off in the background, but yeah, she's off eating the pig. Well, that um that just goes to show how well these raptors are sort of fed. <laughs> if if the other ones aren't really paying attention to that, you can imagine uh, like we see in the Lost World novel where there's a kill um, or even injured raptor, and the other raptors are just on it. Mm-hmm. They're starved, or not starved, but they're just ravaged, ferocious. Um, but again, too, if she's off uh, eating a pig, they're here doing what they need to to try and escape. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's when we cut back to Hoskins, still standing at the exterior gate, watching all this take place, um, seeing seeing how Owen's interacting with the raptors here. Um, and while, uh, while Owen's sort of sitting there trying to uh, hold his arms out towards the raptors, he calls back to Barry to close the gate, <laughs> and Barry yells, Are you crazy? And... He's, Owen sort of softly says, just just trust me. And that's when uh, Leon yells to Barry to close the gate because they've already got they've got through. And Barry pushes the close button. We get that buzzer sound and um, that look on Owen's face from calm to absolute fear sort mm-hmm. of transforms as he, uh, he turns, runs, and does a barrel roll uh, under the closing gate just as it closes behind him. And the, uh, the raptors ram into it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they were yeah. intent to kill him. Yeah, yeah, which doesn't show any control. I don't know what's going through Hoskins' head here, where he, he thinks that um, these raptors can be let loose in a test phase, or in a test, because they're just going to turn around, <laughs> eye them all down, and just go, yum, we're, we're hungry, we're going to eat you. Mm-hmm. And Owen sort of just sits there on the ground, <laughs> obvious to what just happened, and um, I'm a little bit shocked. A little bit surprised that he probably made it as well, <laughs> hoping the uh, the gate was because he, he wasn't looking back to see how high that gate was. He was going on uh, running on pure adrenaline. Mm-hmm. But uh, Barry helps him to his feet and through the bars. You can see the raptors have sort of already given up <laughs> and they're sort of starting to walk around again, just oblivious to the fact that they uh, could have just escaped. And as the minute ends, sort of Barry just this just walks off. I don't know why. Uh, but Owen looks down at the at Leon sitting on the ground and says, or asks him, you're the new guy, right? And Eon, uh, Leon nods, yeah. Didn't you ever wonder why there was a job opening? Yeah. I do like that line. 
It's kind of, I mean, he's probably not serious, but at the same time, it kind of just screw with the new guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wonder, um, we know he's sort of one of the Raptor handlers. I wonder how much in control he is of who's actually on site here. Mm-hmm. If, if, obviously, if he's asking if you're the new guy, he didn't hire him, uh, but surely he would have known that he's been on site. Maybe there was a debrief. Or a briefing, hey, don't put your hands in, in the cage, don't try and pat the animals, don't stick all the those sort in of the things. Cage. It's a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they're big cats, but they're big predatory cats. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get to that next minute because there's some other stuff with uh, the new guy quote, what it might be leading to there. I wonder how much Owen turning and running after sitting there, standing his ground to blue. Um, affects him being the alpha or how much the raptors seem being the alpha where he's he stood up to him um was trying to do his controlling moves and he didn't have the clicker surprisingly but then turns and runs and they actually go after him Mm -hmm. is this one of the first signs of him turning away from owen being their being their alpha it was also interesting because i mean clearly i mean not with um raptors but with like i think for handlers with other predatory animals today know not to turn their back on, say, like a tiger. I think, and I know that farmers in India actually wear like Halloween masks facing the back of their head to protect themselves from rap or from tigers, because the stalking kind of ambush nature of tigers, which is in kind of analogous to the way raptors hunt, and kind of shown off the way in the Lost World. Not just with their coloration choice uh, done by the um, artists, but by the way that they're in the long grass, kind of in this Indian kind of setting where they were basically tiger a tiger in the long grass kind of situation. And the raptors all come up and attack the hunters from behind. And so the raptors, we know they're ambush hunters. We know we've known that since the beginning of the first movie. And their hunting style is to surprise their prey. And in effect, if you turn your back on them, it kind of shows that. And Mm -hmm. so it's interesting also when in Fallen Kingdom kind of continues this where Owen Grady was kind of pretending to show weakness and expose the back of his neck and uh, kind of showed like he pretended to cry in front of Charlie. Charlie went right for the attack. I mean, there was, I mean, there was <laughs> no kind of hesitation there. She went right, she went right for that food, and it was only because he's wearing that falconer's glove that um, Owen was able to protect himself. But once they get up to eight months, it's prob- the falconer's glove probably wasn't a thing anymore, and I'm sure <laughs> he depended a lot on Blue to kind of keep the others in line. Mm-hmm. Well, that's there. That's an instinct. Um, even any any zoo animal has that instinct to kill mm-hmm. no matter how how long it's been in containment for even your pets dogs dogs cats going after birds all that sort of stuff oh yeah of course i mean if i if you've ever seen that video of the cat that quote unquote and you, you can't see me here but i'm making finger quote or air quote <laughs> uh motions stalking and the guy every time the guy taking the video looks up from the laptop the cat gets closer and closer. It's inherent <laughs> in their instincts, you know? Yeah. And it reminds yeah. me of that video of the baby in front of the lion's enclosure in the zoo. And if it were not for that glass, that baby would have, the baby turns its head and I mean, turns its back again towards the lion. And the moment it does that, the lion runs forward and tries to attack the baby. Yeah. Just because you can, uh, put a collar on something doesn't mean mm-hmm. it's going to respect you yeah. all its life. So, I mean, house cat or lion or tiger or raptor, those instincts to kind of attack a unsuspecting prey is kind of inherent within their instinctual DNA. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. I'm just trying to figure out how we got onto that, <laughs> that path now. Um, I'm also not a fan of the uh, the way this sort of scene shot here with Owen in with the Raptors. It's all it's a lot of um, at the front looking at his reaction, looking at him give the commands, and a reverse shot of behind him looking at the animals. 
we know that Owen's not going to die here 20 minutes into the film. But I don't... <laughs> well, it's a tense scene. I just... The way it's shot... Mm. I'm not a fan of the CG models of the Raptors here, too. It just... It doesn't look that good of him standing there with um, these Raptors. And, and these Raptors are probably the largest Raptors we've seen in the whole franchise. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yeah. They've definitely... Uh, not just behaviorally, but physically, these animals are quite different from... The original from the original uh, engine stock, even the ones from, especially the ones from Jurassic Park Three. These Ibis Raptors are heftier. They're bigger, more muscular, more kind of dense, bigger built. They're I wouldn't I'd be hesitant to call them a fat house cat because they're not really fat. <laughs> they're just more robust. They're built like they're meant to take on bullets. You know, like like yeah. this was like. They were built with the idea of weaponization. Yeah, I wonder too. You you mentioned before about uh, Fallen Kingdom and the uh, them being dead or being um, more deadly at eight months. I wonder how much interaction uh, Owen had with them face to face or in person after that eight months. We know we can see later they've got the the head cradles for putting the uh, the camera gear on, and obviously. Maybe uh, vet checks and uh, ministering vitamins or medicines or that sort of stuff as well. But obviously, if there's any um, face-to-face or any handling of the raptors around now, it's they're always tranquilized. Mm. Which makes you wonder how they feel about waking up <laughs> after being tranked. <laughs> Again, rough, sort of man. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Owen's kind of a dick. Okay, he it... keeps drugging us. Yeah, yeah. Again, it sort of it, it makes them sort of. I don't know we're gonna go after this guy later on. Mm-hmm. Make yeah, more sense. Almost resentful of him, you know. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, anything else on the Raptors? We this is the last time we sort of get them for a while. Um. Um. No, I think we're good on that. Yeah, I think we've covered it all. Mm-hmm. Everything I wanted to cover, anyway. Um, heading over to novel comparisons briefly, uh, after Owen tells Blue to stand down, uh, she actually stops and Delta snaps at his jaws at uh, Owen, and he uh, says, hey, what did I say to uh, to Delta, not to Blue, like we say in the film. Mm-hmm. But that's when sort of Blue snaps at Delta, bringing her back into line. So again, as you said, the, the other two Raptors are sort of going off Blue's lead. In the novel, it's actually Blue... Blue is actually listening to Owen, and mm-hmm. she's the one that sort of brings Delta and Echo back, or Delta and Charlie back into line. And interesting too, Owen actually steps right up to Blue within inches, and signals to the other Raptors with his hand to stop, and that's when they back off. And then he yells back to Barry to open the gate, and they escape just like they do in the film. Um, remembering back in the novel, Owen actually jumps down from the catwalk above, so that gate's not open behind him. He, <laughs> at this point, had no had no way of escape until he got Barry to open that gate. Mm-hmm. Which, again, makes sense. If he's, he wants to show control, he's going to walk straight up to Blue and, hey, stop, stand down. Risky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't be doing that. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. You, showing showing you're in uh, in control, again, back to bears and that sort of stuff, you you don't turn and run. You, you walk straight up and make yourself as big as you can and make as much noise as you can. Yeah. Same. Try and get them to stand down. Yeah, same with... Um... You you guys really don't have big cats in Australia, do you? No, not unless they've uh, escaped yeah. <laughs> escaped from a zoo or something and we got have, into the forest. But because we have mountain lions in um, in North America, and they're kind of an animal that you do not at any cost turn your back on, because they are mm-hmm. just like any other large cat. They will attack uh, you. The way that you handle them is not just not just kind of yell and make a bunch of noise, but you have to be big. You got to look them straight in the eye, try to make yourself look as big as possible, and you have to be resilient after you see it and after that first time it runs, because it's going to run back at you the second or third time to try to get you. You know? Yep. Yep. They're, well, they're like one of the they're the no they are the only big cat that we have in North America and. They are basically probably one of the most dangerous large animals we have in North America because they're big cats, basically. Mm. Like having a, it's like it's, we have lions in America, you know. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Well, again, getting back to Colin saying what happens if there's a raptor just over in that forest there, you've already got <laughs> predators that <laughs> were just as dangerous yeah, over yeah, in the really. forest there already. <laughs> I mean, when I went to the Redwoods, yeah, it's, it's bear country. Yes, there are. they have precautions in the garbage cans against bears at the national parks and all that stuff. But I was afraid of cougars. I mean, a bear, I know I can scare off. A cougar is something you got to just be constantly vigilant for. Mm. Well, I've watched these movies far too many times and would expect compies or something to be in those redwoods as well. <laughs> <laughs> I would uh, I would not be going in there unless I was armed, especially staying the night. Um, not, that, uh, not that they're big cats, but we have... Uh, I've actually <laughs> first-hand... Um, up in the northern, up in Cape York and northern Australia, mm -hmm. um, scrub scrub bulls or bulls cattle uh, up there, big, big, nearly.